Personally, it's really nice to be back here after three years almost uh, and seeing all these familiar faces. I miss you all as a Drupal community. So thank you for being here in the session. Um, let's get started. Uh, my name is Jibran Ijaz and this session is about a case, uh, location-based case study. So first thing first, acknowledgement of the country. We acknowledge traditional custodian of the various lands on which we work today and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island, uh, Islander people participating in this meeting. We pay our respect to elder past, present and emerging and recognize and celebrate the diversity of Aboriginal peoples and their ongoing culture and the connection to the lands and waters of New South Wales. So let's go, go through the contents of the um, presentation. Uh, a brief introduction of uh, the, my agency I work for uh, and me, uh, a slide of me, and then a problem statement we, which we are going to solve, resolve today. Um, all the available tools we have uh, on our platform available uh, for to solve this problem, and then uh, a solution design, and it will be a quick one, uh, and then we'll jump into the questions if you have any. Let's get started. We tried this video before, so <laughs> I hope it works. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Thank you, that would be all. <laughs> no. No. Wait, go to the next slide. Yes. No. <laughs> We didn't try this bit. <laughs> so hold on for a second. So we'll try something. Customers no. Okay. Ah, no. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. So. The One CX program is transforming customer digital experience for New South Wales government. It's making it easier for customers to access the information they need without having to understand or navigate structure of the government. But <laughs> okay, yeah. So with our with over nine fifty uh, seven fifty website across ten NSW uh, uh, government clusters, the One CX program is working with agencies to build nsw.gov.au as a single location for the customer to secure information. 
uh, the one CX program is making it easier for customers to seek and say and do by creating a digital experience of New South Wales based on their needs rather than our structures. So let's uh, you know begin the official part of the uh, presentation. Um, so I have been Drupal developer for 10 plus years now. Uh, I'm a core contributor. I, I maintain shortcut module and contact module in core. Um, I maintain data pipelines and various other contrib modules. We'll talk about data pipelines in a bit uh, more a uh, little later. Um, and I'm a solution architect uh, at Department of Customer Services, and I've solved these kind of you know like complex problems along with my technical lead uh, of the platform team, uh, Nathan, sitting here in front row. So let's start with the problem statement. Like, what was the actual problem? So you know, uh, someone said we want uh, you know location search on our site, uh, and let's design this. They came up with this design, and the you know, top right part, like postcode, suburbs, and address. And then, you know, like you can click on your current location and you can search from that as well. So this piece, we are trying to solve this, you know, little piece and trying to find a solution for this problem. So, so first of all, we gathered everyone in the room. This took a while <laughs> because every team has their own needs. They have different type of contents. As you know, we are onboarding different agencies to our platform. So we have health-related content. We have disaster-related content. We have uh, education-related content and for uh, content for, for different communities. So, so there are a whole range of uh, you know like content variety on our platform. So first of all. What we did, we gathered everyone who had a voice or concern or want to bring this product to life uh, to the platform, uh, uh, and we add, uh, brought them in, into the room and started the discussion. Right. So, product owner is here to give us the opinion must about must have, should have, and could have. Uh, business analysts to record all these, you know, information. UI UX designer. Because they have built this thing, they want to understand like, is this feasible in the future? How it would look like as well, uh, and what amendment they have to do after you know, like solution has been changed. Content manager, because you know, like they have to tag the content with the location information uh, so that they, it can appear in search. What type of location information we'll discuss uh, in detail later. And then, you know, like technical lead, what we need on the platform and the solution architect, what is the actual solution going to be after hearing the problem statement? So we got, go, uh, you know, got everyone in the room and had like <laughs> multiple lengthy sessions uh, to hear everyone out uh, to understand the problem. So the conclusion of that discussion was let's use, uh, so in that search bar, you can use postcode and suburbs, uh, and then you know using that link, you can use uh, proximity search. So if your postcodes are matching, if your suburbs are matching, your content uh, you, you will see the relevant content. And if uh, you click you know use my location, then your know, nearest content uh, to your location will appear as well. So then you know the con content part of that is like. Uh, the content needs to be tagged. And because we have whole range of variety of content, um, some content is tagged with regions information. And that region information is different for different clusters uh, within New South Wales, uh, cluster of agencies within New South Wales. And then uh, some content is just tagged with suburb information, and some uh, content is tagged with both regions and postcode information, and sometimes suburbs as well. And if you are viewing some events on our site, they have specific, you know, like street address. So whole range of, you know, like location information is available. And then that's not it. Like sometimes, for example, you have disaster declaration uh, and some area uh, you have, uh, you know, like some, uh, information attached to a reference content that this grant is available for specific, uh, you know, uh, disaster, uh, disaster uh, section or disaster area, uh, area affected by the disaster. And as I said, we have different type of, uh, you know, like regions in New South Wales. I will discuss regions in more detail. Um, and and we need to get all the list of the regions. Like, what are these actual regions? Like, how many uh, regions are there? 
uh, totally. And one thing which was working in our favor was that OSPost has all this information available publicly and we can use it as single source of truth as well. So because we work with whole range of agencies, so we have LGAs, local health district, uh, we have DPC uh, regions, we have uh, DCJ regions, we have transport regions, and and then content team mentioned that there is a chance that we will get more ty different types of regions as well. So um, yeah, like this is, you know, like structure wise or content management wise, this started becoming a very complex problem. So first of all, we need a mapping from regions to postcode and suburbs, but we need that you know, like storage of postcode and suburbs somewhere. And because it's a lo large amount of data, database storage is not ideal for these type of things. Then we need to maintain the list of regions within the CMS so that content editors and content team can go and edit this. And regions should know which postcode and suburbs they belong to as well. And, and you know, content team should be able to update and edit those at the same time. So again, CMS part, CMS changes and data model changes part. And then once that's done, how is this going to work with the search? Uh, if the content is directly tagged or it's referenced and how is then, then proximity search going to work? Um, and we have to identify which existing tools and which tools we do need now to implement all this. So that was all open-ended questions. And we spent uh, a lot of time thinking about these problems, uh, you know, to go back and fix some of the uh, you know, other technical issues. And then once it's rolled out, we want to <laughs> make it available for the whole site. Like if you have news, uh, news items, if you have media releases, we want them to be searched by suburbs postcode and regions maybe and uh, you know like if you want to see news items near your location we want that ability on the site as well so we check the inventory first like what tools on the platform do we have so first of all our uh, hosting solution is uh, container based uh, so we can spin up any container with uh, appropriate services we need uh, if we need uh, and you know like use start using those services in a very secure manner as well then there, there is a data pipeline module in contrib the purpose of data pipeline module is there is a lot of source uh, there there are a lot of sources of data um, available which we can consume on the platform um, like data.nsw provide a lot of apis and the problem is you can't build a system based on you know the in, uh, incoming format all the time. So you need a translator in between, which can convert the incoming data to some uh, version, which we can reuse again and again. So data pipeline module in Contrib helps with that, where you can you know send a JSON or CSV uh, to data pipeline module, create a data pipeline, and it will uh, you know like use the migration type API to translate it in, in a valid version. And uh, so you can then reuse it without uh, thinking about the source data because uh, there's a template and it will al always follow that template. Then on our infrastructure, we have uh, Elasticsearch set up, uh, we have Elastic Endpoint set up, and our content is indexed using Search API and Elastic Connector module, um, and we can access that anywhere uh, on the site or on the front end. <laughs> Then the next thing is, in the core, we have tools like custom fields, computed fields, um, and you know, like field widgets, which can improve uh, like user ex uh, editor experience because a lot of this was related to editors as well. So let's talk about solution design. So first of all, the point is convert all the regions uh, into postcode and suburbs. So we have a region, let's, let's say Sydney city, and how many suburbs are there and how many post, uh, and what is the postcode of those suburbs? So that list should be maintained within the CMS. 
then next item is maintain all the region types in single region taxonomy so uh, content editors don't have to you know move to multiple places they just go to sing one taxonomy field and uh, one taxonomy vocabulary and then you know like add terms to that uh, and add additional regions if they like so it will be like hierarchical uh, you know like lgas all the list of lgas uh, D, uh, DPC, all the DPC regions, and then transport regions, and so on and so forth. And then we talked uh, about like custom widgets being available. So write a custom widget where you can select within the content that which parent term uh, is applicable for this, uh, you know, like this variety of content. So if it's a health uh, related blog post or health related media releases. Uh, you can select, you know, like health uh, regions, and uh, and your uh, content editor will only be able to reference uh, regions from uh, local health regions uh, district, and they uh, and they will have no other data available. So it makes the editor experience, you know, like improve editor experience vastly as well. And then we <laughs> talked about having a. Uh, you know, like data pipeline to import the suburb and postcode data, which is available to, uh, uh, to us from uh, OS post. And the last thing is, if yes, the data is in the pipeline, but what, how is we are going to use it? So we index that data, we create an Elastic index, and we, uh, you know, like index all this data within Elasticsearch so that our front end uh, can use it without interacting with Drupal at all. So once all this, you know, like connected with each other, um, we now have taxonomy which can be tagged to the content or a, or a, or a content which is referenceable, has a, a region information attached to it, can be, uh, you know, attached to the content itself as well. Um, we want to collect all this piece into, um, you know, like, a field which can be indexed and which can be searched upon as well. So for that, we use computed fields. Um, and in the computed fields, you can have all the, uh, you know, like information attached to a region about their postcode and suburbs into, uh, you know, an array, index array. And then you can index that array in search API. So uh, that is, you know, like very handy uh, uh, thing because uh, you can run proximity search and proximity queries uh, if you are using Elastic uh, Search properly. The next thing is because it's like one to n uh, connection, like a region will have multiple postcodes, uh, a region will have multiple suburbs. So we need uh, to support, uh, you know, like geo shape. Uh, in index, uh, like data type in Elasticsearch and out of the box in Elastic Connector module, that functionality is not available. Um, so we had to implement that as well. And we had to read up on how the GeoShape API will, you know, like collect all this information. Once that was done, the next part is, is our hosting, uh, you know, going to support this Elastic GeoShape data type or not? So we had to upgrade our uh, containers to support the latest, uh, you know, like Elastic version, uh, so that we can support, uh, you know, like GeoShape data type. And last but not the least, because we want the proximity search to work, uh, we use the Geo Distance API within Elastic uh, to query the Geo shapes, uh, which can, you know, uh, help us with proximity search. So looking at the design, we had the source, um, suburb postcode source data, bottom right, this bottom right, yeah. <laughs> uh, we look at the suburb postcode source data because the, the postcode suburb are unique uh, combination. So we can create a, a unique hash out of them. And then, uh, you know, like we use that hash for searching uh, using Elastic Index. Once that hash has been, uh, you know, like stored properly, we can then reference it using custom fields in taxonomy terms. 
then those taxonomy terms can be attached to the content or referenceable content and content can uh, you know like create computed fields and get the appropriate information from the source data uh, or hashes uh, to you know like give the basic piece of uh, like postcode and suburb information and then the computed field will get indexed as content um, in the last tick and we can run uh, and our front end can run the queries so for example in the screenshot if user comes in and they type in the postcode we go to the suburb and postcode hash using elastic search index we get the uh, the lat and long and we pass that lat and long to um, you know using geo distance query to elastic content index and get the appropriate results so that's how the whole puzzle <laughs> came together um yeah so this is a like flow diagram in a very complex way but i hope it makes sense and that's it uh, any questions so are you using the aws elastic search um, solution? for now we are using aws elastic search solution but in php 8.1 we will you uh, you know like migrate to uh, open search and then we will use start using open search and open search supports the geo stuff the geo we have to assess that and add that ability if not um did you tag all the content manually or was that done or with something automated like with the location tagging yeah uh, really good question. Uh, so some of the content, legacy content or existing content is, has already been tagged with regions uh, because that the that's the convention uh, you want uh, in the search in the sidebar, like, you know, like I want to see city of Sydney related news items. So you can, we had some of the stuff already tagged, but a new content when they it will come, the content editors will add that. So, so we did populate the taxonomy terms with postcode and suburbs information automated uh, automatically because that's a big piece like uh, you can have like 10 or 15 suburbs or postcode related information within one uh, you know like region so uh, that is automated but the region piece the content team needs the control over that and they want and there is no like mapping you can create which is genuine for regions right like this content belongs to this region without having some rules or you know like predefined uh, you know like this nid belongs to this region or stuff like that so yeah and how did you just resolve data integrity issues with like spelling of suburbs being different in different places or was that not an issue for you we are uh, using ospost data as a standard so yeah we didn't consider that as an issue but okay. again if that's an issue, we can uh, up, uh, update the source data and then re-index it and it will be fine. Welcome. Um, so you've got regional sort of geo-shaped data. Um, yeah. I'm guessing you're getting that from like a, the GIS data source from OpenGov. So the OpenGov documents. Um, so, sorry, can you? Uh, never mind. Over, overlaying geo-shaped data, how do you deal with the relevancy? So say you've got a region and a LGA and something content between them, how do you deal with the relevancy if something's only tagged against one of those? Yeah, so that part, we did a spike on, you know, like before implementing all this, so we, we had to do a spike on all this, like the proximity will actually work with multi-shape or not. And within multi uh, geo shape uh, uh, like data type in elastic there are different type of shapes you can create you can create a polygon you can create a multi point and uh, and there are a few more as well so we went with multi point and, and with multi point uh, like elastic you know like makes sure that you know like the proximity is you know like properly relevant so we are relying on that piece if not then we can write you know a custom script within the filter uh, plug in a uh, uh, filter search and make sure the relevancy is proper. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, uh, um, like one region, the postcode will go across two regions, you know what I mean? 
a border. Do you use the geographic, uh, like that mapping, like the uh, edge, what do you call it, multi point to try and say which side of the fence you're <laughs> That's a very good question, and I'm glad you picked it up. So the reason we gave the content editors the ability to, you know, like update the suburbs and postcode list within a region is for exactly the same, to fix the exactly same problem you are discussing. Because within these LGAs and, you know, like local health districts and transport regions, so postcode and suburbs move, like they re reclassify the, you know, like regions and some suburbs will be added or removed or some postcode will be added and removed and the data changes and all posts get uh, updated, you know, like coordinates as well. So the way we are indexing stuff, we can just change the source and it will re-index and it will, uh, you know, have a cascading effect. But within the region, a content editor can go, okay, this region is not there anymore. Just remove this because it's a multi-value field. You can just edit it and remove that value, right? At any text field you remove. And once that is done, you have uh, all the updated information throughout, right? And then we don't have to worry about elastic part at all. We don't have to worry about, uh, you know, the relevancy of multi-point search, which is on the edge or, you know, like, which is not part of that suburb because our data is making sure, you know, the relevant postcodes are only in the content index. I hope this answers your question. So you use your index, uh, yeah, rather than doing every object, you just have that central index that proves which side of the fence, you know what I mean? Yes. So you keep it consistent in a, at a higher level sort of thing. Yes. Huh. Because we need more control and content teams, the content team want more control on the source data as well. It will be extra. Okay. Second question. So um, I suppose something wasn't quite clear for me and I'm interested in um, when someone, when, when say someone proximity searches themselves with the button or types in a, a region or a postcode into that search, the search that, their search that actually hits Elastic, is that resolving a postcode hash or a postcode um, suburb hash first and then simply just sending that to Elastic? and ignoring what they might have typed or ignoring kind of the details of their search text that they've got? Yeah, so, so there are two uh, different solutions here uh, and two different paths way is here. So if you have postcode and suburb, like we can get the exact hash for that postcode and suburb from the OSPOS data, right? And from that hash, we can get the coordinates and from the coordinates, we can run the proximity query, right? You're sending you lat long. Yes. And then when you use use location, we have already the lat long. So we can just run the content query. So there are two different paths for the front end to evaluate the results. So the, the content items themselves are, do they have a specific address or are they just getting tagged with a region? So, so, as, as I mentioned, like it's whole different type of variety, right? Like sometimes it's just regions, right? Like if it's health related content and it's valid for far west health, for example, uh, so it's just tagged with far west health region, right? And if it's a disaster uh, declaration or a grant, it, it will have collection of postcodes and then it will have some, you know, like region attached to it as well. And that region might be, a, you know, DPC region or that region might be, a, you know, uh, DCJ region or transport region, doesn't matter. So with the proximity search, if there's no address, it's just, is it just the lat long of like the middle of the area? No, so, so as a user, you will input something, right? And that input will be translated into lat long. But the proximity is proximity, fr so one, the lat long of you is specific, but against the so, proximity of the content, if it's only a region, that's a blob, not a point, right? Yes. So that is uh, what, uh, you know, Elastic's GeoShape API will help with because they make sure if it's a multi-point, then the closest will appear uh, oh, gotcha. or, or top. The closest there. Yeah. Gotcha. Hi, just a quick one on data pipelines you use to get data directly into Elastic Search. Yes. 
What data was that? Was that separate to the taxonomy terms that stuff is getting tagged with? Yes. The, so the source data is a CSV from uh, OSPOST. So OSPO, if you go to the OSPOST website, you can download the postcode and suburb information with the coordinate, geo coordinates in it as well. Mm-hmm. And you can extract it as CSV and we index that CSV into Elasticsearch. So, so you're effectively having two lists of postcodes then? the stuff that you're directly importing via the data pipeline and the taxonomy terms that get tagged against content? Like, is that... Yes, you are correct there, but a slight correction is, yes, data pipeline is one index of the source we are getting from OzPost and the actual content index, which has all the uh, suburb and postcode information attached to that content. So there's a elastic content index. So if you see in this picture, there's a elastic postcode and suburb index, and then there is elastic content index. So content index is just any index, like you have search API enable, or you have solar enable, uh, solar enable or elastic enable. It, uh, it doesn't matter, right? You can search the content from that. So, so yeah, so we have two indexes. So why did you have the two indexes? Is it because search API doesn't really support the geo stuff or? No, we have, uh, we are built, so this, I, in the, you know, like top part, it's a search front end. So it's not Drupal related front end. It's just partially decoupled front end. So it's a React application maybe, which is getting postcode information or suburb information from the input field and then getting a hash value. And from that hash value, finding the nearest content from that. Thanks. I think I got it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.